four days to Valentine's Day. We're all spending more time at home at the moment. So we thought this might be a good time to talk about interior therapy. So apparently your possess possessions can have an impact on your relationship, whether you're looking for love or you want to improve the relationship you're already in. Suzanne Rainon believes that she can help and she's on the line now. Good afternoon to you, Suzanne. Hello, Nina. It's great to be back. So tell me what on earth is interior therapy. Okay, so interior therapy is really simple. It's really straightforward. It's combining the positive outcomes of life coaching, decluttering, organizing, observation, and actively creating the life you want for yourself with a bit of a sprinkling of basic feng shui to help you understand how your home can work with you or against you. And it's a five-step process which is designed to upgrade your lifestyle, your relationships, aspirations anything else you want to improve and it works and does it cost any money because when you talk about improving interiors people might think well everywhere's closed at the minute i can't really get the things i want for my my space or my house um is that a consideration so much of it is is not about buying new stuff in it's about really looking at what you've got how it makes you feel, what it's doing to the space you're living in. So so actually, for a good part of the process, you're more likely to be noticing things that you don't actually need around you anymore than buying new stuff in. Right, and getting rid of them. So having a good uh, sp a spring clean, and it's th that time of year for it anyway as well. So how do we know if we need interior therapy or if interior therapy could benefit us? Well, basically, if your life is absolutely perfect, you could not be happier, there is nothing that you want or need or you aspire to, you don't need interior therapy. But if there are things that would make life a little brighter, if your relationship could do with pepping up a little or your family, you know, you could get on better, mm -hmm. perhaps you're you'd like to be promoted or to get a new job to change direction. All of these things can be helped with interior therapy. So it's not just romantic relationships, but uh, no. because we're leading up to Valentine's Day, it, we're focusing on that this afternoon, I suppose, because it, it can help that way as well. Um, so for, for single people or people in a relationship, both can benefit from this. So let's get down to business and work out how it works or explain it, Suzanne, in a little more detail. So your book, Welcome Home, How Stuff Makes or Breaks Your Relationship, is broken into three parts. You mentioned a five-step process. L let's start with the, the firm foundation. So what is the foundation of this interior therapy? Yeah, and you're so right to start there because, you know, if you try and build on the wreckage of past relationships, the cracks soon appear. You need a really firm foundation. So the first thing you want to be thinking about in terms of creating that balanced place to start thinking about love from is to make sure that you have removed anything that's holding you back from the past. Now, I guess you probably know that there are a couple of people in your life who seem to be trapped in a pattern with relationships. You know, they date a different person, but they get the same outcome. It might be infidelity, abuse, toxicity. I've got one friend who's, who's either been ghosted or catfished, you know, with every single person. It's like, how is she attracting these people? And, you know, if you're always having the same thing happening to you, then there is something around you that isn't making that happen. Mm. And so interior therapy will actually help you find out what that is, why it's happening, and give you the, well, empower you basically to do something about it. So what do you do? <laughs> you start at the very beginning, which is, as Julie Andrews would say, a very good place to start. You start by looking around, taking notice of what's in your home. and. You know, something like art can be a real stinker because it can describe exactly what's going on. But unless you look at it with new eyes, you'll be completely oblivious to it. So I always say to people, you know, look at what's on your wall and describe what a child would see. Is it bursting with really a positive, welcoming energy or is it a bit sad or lonely or is it even scary? And Another thing to bear in mind, especially with feng shui energy, which is part of the process, is that pictures with a lot of water trigger emotions. So arguments, upset, tears, tantrums even. But think about homes now. How often do you see pictures of water in the, in the lounge room or 
a picture of a, the sea and a, an empty jetty over a bed, you know, and that's just, it's absolutely describing what's going on. It's, it's not offering you an inspira- inspiring connection with anybody new. It's just, you know, maybe the sign of a, 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 an empty space. So are there certain possessions, you know, you're, you're talking about um, paintings with um, the sea and them. I'm trying to think, have I got any in the house? I don't think I have. <laughs> but I'm thinking, are there certain possessions which impact on love and relationships particularly? Yeah, so in terms of not so good stuff, if you have got dried or dead flowers in the house, especially lots of people seem to have dried flower hearts, and that's very, very bad news. But then a heart, or rather two hearts, if you can bring that love energy into your house, and I'm not talking in a a sort of tacky, kitschy sort of way. I'm talking about bringing in something that you look at it, and it just makes you feel really good when you when you see it there, but bring those two hearts together and actually have them touching rather than on separate sides of the room. It's it's a very simple thing. And, you know, it might sound incredibly woo-woo, but once you've done the process, you'll see how all of these come together to actually change the energy in your home. Is it possible, you know, if you've lived in the, the same house and say you've gone from bad relationship to bad relationship, you would actually blame the space and blame the house for that happening and not yourself? Um, I would say there is going to be something in that space, in that house, that has got you running on repeat. And it's not a case of, you know, and you'll find also that people will go from one bad relationship and move out. They'll take all their stuff and move to another house. The same thing happens again. It's not necessarily about the house. It's about the stuff. And once you deal with the stuff that you've got around you, then you can actually start to unpick what's going on in your head and identify you know where your values might not match the values of the people that you've been seeing so basically what you're saying is clear the head and that is the is the way forward but part of that process is to clear the house out of a few things as well Um, absolutely talk to me about space clearing um because you talk about this in the book and it doesn't necessarily mean moving things around um you're talking about um salt using salt and sage and the, you know this sense of clearing an aura or cl- cl- cleansing a, a space um some people listen to the program this afternoon might think that is absolute nonsense while other people might have tried it and said yep yeah, that works there's something in it so t- t- talk to me about that idea Okay, so a space clearing ceremony is just, it's a lovely thing to do. So once you have reclaimed your home and it's looking the way you want it to, it's lovely and bright and clean and sparkling, then what you can do is this little ceremony just to refresh the energy, put put the sparkle, if you like, into the walls and into the air and into everything around you. And yes, that does sound woo-woo. I accept that. It really, really does. But when you do the process and um i did it with my daughter at the weekend and she'd never taken part in one before and she was she was kind of you know she's she's not as as woo woo as me maybe and at the end of it she said oh mum that was amazing when are we doing it again you know because the place just feels larger it's brighter it's like it it breathes out and goes ah so yeah, it's it's a process. There's a there's a whole description of how to do it in the book, and actually, I made a video the other day about it as well. So that, so, um, so that's part of the the second uh, process or part two of the book, which is the actual interiors therapy, um, you know, the clearing out of of the possessions, and then finally you create and you talk about this manifesto for love, and you present this as the game changer. So, you know, if there's anyone out there who's, you know, a wee bit distressed that there's no love in the life at the minute and would give anything a go, um, what is this? What is, does the manifesto of love propose? So the manifesto for love will draw the energy of the person with the attributes that you desire towards you. But it can only do this if you make your manifesto for love when you're in a positive, balanced, happy emotional state and you can detach from the outcome and any specific person so you can't make a manifesto for love you know thinking about the person you've had a crush on for the last couple of months it's got to be absolutely clear and balanced so that you're drawing in the person who's right for you not the person you think is right for you and it's a very very interesting thing to do (laughs) and um, I hear some amazing stories 
about it. I mean, there's, there's a, a girl I know who's also called Lynette, funnily enough, and she was one of the first people that we did the manifesto process with. And it worked a treat, but for the one thing, which was that she'd forgotten to define the height of the person she was in, would be very keen to meet. And she's tiny. I mean, she's under five foot. And the guy who was perfect for her, who waltzed into her life, is six foot six. And they're happy as Larry, married. They've just moved to Scotland with their baby. And it's just, it's all so lovely to see. So you're saying about put, putting it out into the into the world and it's going to come back to you. Is this essentially what you're saying? Yeah, there's, there's a process to it. But in, to all intents and purposes, yeah, you're putting it out what you want and being open to it coming back to you. Yeah. Uh, can you be specific? Can I be more specific? So you're going to start off by digging deep into what really matters for you. What are your values? What do you want in a partner? And you're making a whole list of those things. And then you're defining, okay, what's essential? What can I compromise on? What is an absolute no-go for me? And then you fine-tune that and you create this list and you, you just do, you know, it's, it's, it's quite a long process, but once you get to it, then you've got a, a finely defined list of what you're looking for, who that person is potentially, and then you just leave that with the universe to sort out for you. So you have to do all the work your fir first yourself and then invest in yourself a little bit and then you'll get to the point where you can invest in this manifesto for love so suzanne we're just heading to the end of the program and um, we've only a few minutes left ahead of valentine's weekend it's the 10th of february there's still a couple of days can you recommend changes that are easy enough to make that would leave the home perhaps a little more of a romantic space ahead of the weekend and i'm particularly thinking of homes that are overcrowded where people are working from home there's homeschooling going on there's everything's going on at home at the minute romance is possibly the last thing on anyone's mind absolutely and you know i could talk about this all day but i'm gonna just fine tune this and focus on the bedroom and i'm not going 50 shades of gray on you just don't don't panic here but what i want you to think about with your bedroom is to look at it as your sanctuary so when you're in the room your attention can focus on your relationship you're not thinking about the kids or work or the dog this is where you focus on the person that you love so take out anything which doesn't relate to rest or romance so no laundry take out the exercise equipment the paperwork all those piles of books, anything that is distracting you from your partner. And then give all of the surfaces a good wipe down. Check for cobwebs because those are a sign of stagnation and we don't want that in your love life. Stagnation will reflect back if it's there. And then be sure the bed is balanced. So have a comfortable headboard, two bedside lockers, matching lamps, fresh linen. Make sure that it looks and feels equal, you know, with the pillows on the bed. And you know, please, please, please don't just, you know, use one of the kids old duvet covers or have the cat litter tray there in the corner. This space is for you and it should feel really good. And, you know, if you're single and you don't want to be, you can use those pair creating techniques to prepare for love to come into your life too. I'm just thinking my landing's going to be very busy. Um, <laughs> if I have to clear everything out of the bedroom, good luck. And if I have to balance it, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen without, the, without home stores being open. But anyway, Suzanne, lots of tips there. Thanks very much uh, for the chat this afternoon. And thanks for uh, talking to me on the programme again. That's it. Suzanne Roynan and her book, Welcome Home, How Stuff Makes or Breaks Your Relationship, is available from Panama Press. And it's on special offer on Kindle today as well and that's about it from me